was a great start to the day-night doubleheader and a great finish in the first inning. Hunter Pence, a double down the left field line. That got things rolling against Anibal Sanchez, and it's a good thing because he was really good this afternoon. That brought home Placido Polanco, and then Raul Ibani has his 30th double of the year for the 10th consecutive season. And Pence coasted home. The Phillies had a 2-0 lead. And then they left in the hands of Kyle Kendrick, who didn't allow a hit until the fifth inning of this afternoon's ball game. Kendrick had his sinker moving, he had his cutter moving, and he had his changeup moving. He also had some really good defense behind him. Pete Orr made three really good plays. Placido Polanco was a magnet over at third base. And then later on in the ball game with Brad Lidge on the mound, this ball to left field could have changed the whole game. But Raul Ibanez threw out Omar. Infante, that was the second out of the inning, and the Phillies worked out of a jam, and then Ryan Matson got Infante to pop out into foul territory to finish up the ball game for the Phillies. The Phillies hope the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow here in Philadelphia will bring them to the end of October for a World Series championship. But for today, they'll settle for a sweep of a day-night doubleheader against the Florida Marlins. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. Sarge will be around a little later on in the telecast. Well, five innings from Kyle Kendrick, one run. That was it. And in the nightcap, they lean on Cliff Lee to finish off this season series against the Marlins. Well, it's hard to win a doubleheader, Tom, anytime. But, of course, you have to win the first game. You just detailed how that was done. Then the next thing is it helps if you have a really good pitcher going in game two. And they have a really, really good pitcher going in game two. And this guy, Cliff Lee, here's the game he pitched against the Atlanta Braves in the series that the Phillies wanted to try and put the Braves away to help win the division title. And they did just that. Cliff Lee, a big part of it. He pitched a nine inning shutout, beat him nine to nothing, did everything. You see him make a double play right there. Finally got Brian McCann to ground out to second base to end the ball game. Just a tremendous job by Cliff Lee, who has been so good this year. Twice National League Pitcher of the Month, consistently excellent. That is an understatement. Through the last four seasons of his career, this is what this guy has done. Look at the wins, the earned run average, just a tremendous pitcher. And the Phillies have him going here in the second game, and they'd like to get that magic number to two. The Braves, they don't play tonight, so you get it to two and then see what happens tomorrow. Arguably the best year for Cliff Lee individually since he won the Cy Young back with the Cleveland Indians a few years ago. So he'll be on the mound tonight to finish off this day-night doubleheader. He'll be opposed by Alex Sanabia, who will be making his 10th overall start of the year. Nine in the minor leagues. This will be his first here in the big leagues. When we return, the starting lineups, a beautiful sky, and the first pitch.
really press to get this place cleaned and opened again in time for the night portion of this day night doubleheader and they did a heck of a job. I mean they had a very short period of time to get things cleaned up. The field looks outstanding. The stadium looks great. Uh, and they really did a they just did tremendous work just to get this thing rolling and get it underway on time. Let's take a look at the Philly starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity only from Comcast leading it off in left field in the second game. Emilio Bonifacio, Brian Peterson bat second. Mike Stanton hits third. Jose Lopez is over at first base. He'll back clean up. Omar Infante, the second baseman, bats fifth. Donnie Murphy's at short once again. He'll hit sixth. And the bottom third of Dominguez, Hayes, and Sanabia, the starting pitcher for the Florida Marlins. And they'll face Philly's left-hander, Cliff Lee, on this cool night. Short sleeves for Lee, 16-7, and seven, with a 2.44 earned run average. 210 and two-third innings for Cliff Lee to this point. Look at the hits, way under. And 42 walks, 211 strikeouts. More strikeouts than innings pitch. And this is a guy until a few years ago, they never thought of him as a strikeout pitcher. Well, he sure is now. Southwest Airlines scouting report, that's a fastball, but that's only part of his repertoire. When he has his curveball going, that's when he gets a lot of strikeouts. Slider, cutter, he normally can throw them where he wants to. Career against Florida, outstanding. 2-0 and with a good earned run average of... 2.77. Now it's cold, even though he has shirt sleeves on out there. Guys were having a little trouble commanding the ball in the first game because all of a sudden it turned so cold. So we'll see how it works tonight for Cliff Lee. So Bonifacio will lead it off. He's batting right handed against the left hander, Cliff Lee. And the first pitch of the night is taken outside. So we're underway. And it's one ball and no strikes. And there is a serious wind blowing in out of the northwest right now. It is a great pitcher's night as far as balls in the air. Bonifacio 42 infield hits so far this year in game one. He was one for five with a couple strikeouts. And his numbers overall. A career high in hits and at bats and a number of other categories. And he takes a strike. It's two and one. Two and two. Lee has a seven game winning streak going. It spans eight games. In fact, during those eight games, he's 7 0 with a 0 0.99 earned run average. Chase Utley, who's back in the starting lineup, one away. Well, it's time now for our Nissan Keys to tonight's game. And it's got chilly and windy here at Citizens Bank Park. Chase Utley back in the lineup just made a good play there on Bonifacio to start the game. And Lee up against a very, very young pitcher tonight. And Alex Sanabia on paper. Good matchup for the Phils. Lee with 16 wins and 210 and two thirds innings coming into this ball game. 211 strikeouts. It's a single season first for him to reach 200 strikeouts in a year. And he fires a strike to Brian Peterson. Peterson rips one down the right field line. That's a base hit heading down toward the warning track. Cut off by Hunter Pence and Peterson will stop at second with a one out double. So a runner in scoring position right out of the shoot here in the top of the first for the Marlins. And it'll bring Mike Stanton to the plate. Mike Stanton did not start game one, but he came in late. He pinch hit and wound up walking. And then came on to finish up the ball game in right field. He's been nursing a sore right hamstring. But it's been a good year for him with 32 home runs and 82 runs batted in. And he takes low. That'll probably be something in the offseason they'll have to work on because he had a problem with that early in the season, too. No, it was in spring training that he had the hamstring. So he is one of the, the cornerstones of the franchise, if not the number one guy for them to go into the future, and they want him to play as many games as possible. I think it's safe to say that he has surpassed Hanley Ramirez mm -hmm. as a foundation for this team. Now, the Marlins will need both of them at the top of their game. In order to be successful. But you know he's just 21 years old and whether Jack McKeon's back or not next year. He realizes that this guy is a bona fide cleanup hitter. 
And Lee just fires one on the inside corner. It's two and two. Well, he, he has power that he can loan to others and still have plenty. And he's just ridiculous how far and how hard he can hit a baseball. Two balls, two strikes the count. And that ball just hit him in the leg. A breaking ball that just kept on breaking inside. Yeah, Lee went for a strikeout there with a curveball on him. He hadn't shown him one yet. And it just kept on going. Maybe it hit the back foot. Well, it hit the front foot. This guy batted the first game, Jose Lopez, a pinch hitter, and he was hacking at everything, pulling everything down the left field line. Finally hit a hard ground ball to Polanco. Well, he's got a chance to bat against Lee. He has uh, the second most at bats against Lee on the Marlins roster lifetime. John Buck has 40. This is the 40th for Jose Lopez. Right, because of their time in the American League, both of them. I should say this is the 32nd. I went to the count to him. Runners lead off first and second. And a foul ball over the Phillies dugout. Phillies magic number to clinch the National League East is down to three. That's nice. The best they can be at the end of tonight is two because the Braves are off tonight. They have 96 wins overall. Phillies are picking up a couple of those games on the Braves that they've had in hand for a while. In the dirt, one ball, two strikes. I think it's a total of four. Now it's down to three, and then it'll be two after tonight as they, as they start to catch up. And they, those, of course, are games they can win, and they did that today. They won the first game. Kyle Kendrick got the victory in the first game. He went five innings through 78 pitches. I think somebody just told him he was on television. There he goes. That's what he's doing. <laughs> this guy just wants to pull everything. You, you just think he'd be really vulnerable to anything slow. Maybe not. Because he pulls off speed stuff and fastballs. To left field. Ibanez on the run. The wind is going to bring it back a little bit. He makes the catch. And the runners will go back to second and first. I would love to see the spray charts on this guy. He can't have a ball to the right of second base. Well, he hit that foul ball. Well, first yeah, base exactly. <laughs> yeah, he got jammed in that. But he puts a ball in play, and it's going to the left to second. That's probably a three-run home run a lot of nights, too. As you said, the wind just got that thing and parachuted it. Yeah, it's going to take a really strong person to get the ball through that wind tonight the way it's blowing or just hit a screaming low liner like a Stanton could do somebody like that. Omar Infante drops to the five hole. With the runners on first and second. Infante takes at the knees it's 0 and 1 game one Infante was one for four. But he was involved in probably the. One of the most important plays of the game thrown out trying to score from second and a ball hit to left field. Probably Banyas threw him out. And the Phillies went on to win the game three to one. And these guys almost made it even tougher on the tremendous cleanup job that was done here. They bunted for a tie in the ninth. Oh my. And Afante came up with runners at second and third and thankfully popped up to end the game. I went to the count. Mentioned during game one that Infante would like to stay with the Florida Marlins, partly because he's played every day. Something that he's been trying to, to do over the years with the Tigers and with the Braves. Apparently, he was uh, offered a, an initial deal, and it wasn't to his liking. And a swing and a miss, and Cliff Lee needed 22 pitches, but he's able to get through the top of the first. No runs, one hit, two men left. Chase Sutley will get a chance to bat when we return at the bottom of the first.
most victories by a manager in Phillies history. He won't reach that goal tonight. But this lineup that he presents for the Phillies brought to you by Xfinity only from Comcast. Maybe get the Phillies a little closer. Leading it off at shortstop Jimmy Rollins. John Mayberry bats second. Chase Utley hits third followed by Hunter Pence and Raul Ibanez. Ross Glowe is the sixth hitter. He's over at first base. Carlos Ruiz bats seventh. Pete Orr hits eighth. And batting ninth and pitching is Cliff Lee. And on the mound is 23-year-old right-hander Alex Sanabia. 0-5 in the minors this year in nine starts with a 5.75 earned run average. Three different levels as he was coming back from an arm injury. He had a chance to be in their starting rotation at the beginning of the year, but then came up sore. Here's the scouting report we have on him from Southwest Airlines. Evidently really likes to use his off-speed stuff and will pitch backwards quite a bit. He's come out here throwing fastball, fastball. Not a hard thrower necessarily, but uh, a good changeup. Side one and two. Rollins was one for one in the first game of the series. The first game of this day night doubleheader. Overall hitting 268 with 14 home runs. And 58 runs batted in. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Karen Burson of Medford. If the Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game, Karen will win a whopping $300. Ground ball right side. And a change up gets Jimmy Rollins for the first out and then I'll bring John Mayberry to the play. Well that's a report on him especially with left handed hitters that you you're going to see a lot of change ups because he really likes that pitch. Sanapia made his major league debut last year. And he went five and three with a three point seven three earned run average for the Marlins. He made twelve starts and a couple of relief appearances. He had 47 strikeouts and 72 and a third. So he's not a rookie. He's considered a second year player. Yeah, not a strikeout pitcher by those numbers you just gave. And he delivers a strike to Mayberry. Name is Alejandro Sanabia. Friends call him Alex. Goes by Alex. Mayberry loops one to right center and the wind is certainly going to be to his advantage on that base hit. A one out single. It's like a spring training game the way the wind is blowing here tonight. As Tom said the wind will be in his advantage advantage because that ball is going to parachute out there into the outfield. It, many nights here in this ballpark that's a, a fly ball to one of the outfielders but that thing got up there and started coming back towards the infield. It's a difference of 17 degrees from the first game. To this game. Yeah, and, and right here, that's like playing a downwind hole and you needed two more clubs to get to the green. That thing is way short. It's in the trap. One away for Chase Utley. He pinch hit in the first game. Single to center field. The Phillies don't have a lot of guys in the lineup in this nightcap that played in the first game. Hunter Pence, Raul Ibanez, Pete Orr. They pretty much played the whole game. The others just got some at bats. Yeah, and that's Charlie kind of likes that in a way. He's able to use a lot of different guys. Victorino and Howard are struggling a little bit right now and gives them a chance to sit and watch. And thankfully, they have this big lead, so they're able to do this stuff way earlier than they've been able to do it the last few years. One ball, one strike the count to Utley. Making his first start since the series in, against the Braves, where he got hit in the back of the helmet. The pitch by Eric O'Flaherty. This guy, right now, every fastball has been the same speed. And, uh, you know, that doesn't bode well a lot of times for a pitcher if everything, all your, your, all your fastballs are the same speed. Because they'll figure it out in time after a while. And his fastball does not have a whole lot of uh, a movement sink or those kind of things that you look for. So just early on watching him, you can see why he likes to use his changeup for out pitches a lot and set up with his fastball. So 
See, he wants to go with a change up here. Nope, another fastball. To left field. Bonifacio will follow it. This is one of those nights if you're a pitcher, you can throw a lot of pitches that maybe you wouldn't normally throw and get away with balls in the air because they're just not going to go anywhere. So Chase is retired. It'll bring Hunter Pence to the plate. Pence hit third in game one, batting cleanup here in game two. Now he could punch a hole in the wind, maybe. Good time to run. They're thinking the same thing there. Maybe John Mayberry think about stealing a bag, get in a scoring position for Pence. Seven steals for Mayberry this year. He's been caught three times. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Jim Salisbury from CSNPhilly.com had a Q&A the other day with Hunter Pence. And if folks are wondering a few things about Pence, uh, that Q&A told some of the story, including why he chokes up on the bat the way he does. He said that he grew up a fan of Barry Bonds. And he said, well, if it worked for Barry Bonds, he figured he would try it. And it certainly has worked for him. He said he's always choked up. He doesn't have quite Barry Bonds' strike zone. He'll swing at anything, this guy. <laughs> Hear the crowd go, whoa! Because that thing left his hand. <laughs> Everything's okay. And this was a this was high from the minute it left his hand, so you could hear the crowd go, whoa. Pence drove in a run with a double in the first game and then scored on a double by Raul Ibanez. Just threw a breaking ball there, maybe in the first one. And appropriately to a right-handed hitter. He looked like he's gonna use more change-ups to left-handed hitters. Mike Stanton stood his ground momentarily and then came in and picked that one out of the air. No runs, one hit, one man left. One of the books here in the nightcap of the day night doubleheader. We go to the second. Marlins nothing, Phillies nothing. Dot com. Browse the largest online selection of authentic team gear, including official caps, T-shirts, jerseys, collectibles, and more. Get your team gear straight from the source. Shop the Phillies.com shop. 
A lot of folks in the crowd today. Shopped online at Phillies.com or stopped by the Majestic Clubhouse store. Plenty of time to do that today if they were at both games of this day night doubleheader. Went in there to see if they had any sweatshirts. Sweatshirts or jackets. Donnie Murphy leads it off here in the second. Murphy was two for four in game one. Played 87 games at AAA this year. At 249 with 12 home runs in the minors. On the hands, popped up into shallow left center, and Rollins can't get to it. Looked like it hit off the edge of his glove, and he picked it up on a bounce. Yeah. Almost because the wind was bringing it back to him. Well, the other thing, too, is I'm surprised the umpires didn't go out and get a better look at it because uh, that was awfully close. Right there, he took that quick hop right back to him, and you can tell by his reaction that it bounced back. I think the third base umpire was the one who had the best angle. Was did he, he out did there? Did he call yeah. it? I didn't see anybody call it. Because normally they'll just well on that play, I guess to, I guess to them to the umpires it was so obvious, but when you know to your backs turn like that, it's hard to see. Here's Matt Dominguez. Matt Dominguez. The Marlins thought. Oh, Phil Cousy's already in the Marlins dugout. Eduardo Perez is barking at him. <laughs> Early, isn't it? Yeah. He didn't like his strike zone the first inning, I guess. Phil Cuzzy will yell back too. Obviously. He's got that that New York way about it. North Jersey. Well, was. same thing. It's like when you're from South Jersey, you got that Philly way about yeah. you. He is from Nutley, New Jersey. Yeah, and, and he he can get combative. Well, let's just leave it at that. To the count to Dominguez. I mentioned Dominguez, the Marlins uh, thought he could win the the everyday job at third base during spring training. It didn't happen, but they are going to take a long look at him here in September. And a call, strike three. Shouldn't be any barking at all on that one. That mm. was just a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Second strikeout for Lee. Eduardo Perez, as Tom said, there he is. He's Tony Perez's son, Eduardo and Victor. They're just young kids. When Tony played here back in the 80s. That's not even on the corner. <laughs> that baby's right down the middle. That was a good pitch. Yeah. No way you're going to bark on that one. Ground ball to shortstop might be two. There's one, and the double play combination for the Phillies is back in action. Six four three Rollins to Utley, over to Ross Glode, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, nobody left. They're getting comfortable again as we get into the heart of September.
The Nationals Phillies game on Sunday, August 14th. Make sure you make a note because that game will be made up as part of a day night doubleheader next Tuesday, the 20th of September. The tickets for the 14th are good for the 105 ball game on the 20th. It's game number 62 on your ticket and it should be used for that ball game. Any questions, you can log on to Phillies.com and check out the upcoming schedule. Phillies will face the Cardinals for four and then the Nationals for four after this game is over with against the Marlins tonight. Last of the second, Raul Ibanez will lead it off. Ibanez, Glode, and Ruiz against Sanabia. home runs 73 runs batted in for Ibanez who collected his 30th double of the season in game one. Off the end of the bat. He carried pretty well. And one away. Earlier today was a busy day here in Philadelphia. There's Scott Palmer. He was the master of ceremonies. Mayor Michael Nutter was on hand as the mural that will be put up on that building right there. It's a Phillies mural, one of many here in the city of Philadelphia. It'll be ready by uh, sometime in the summer of 2012. It was unveiled, and it's a great shot. It has some of the great moments in Phillies history and also some of the great players in Phillies history that will be part of the mural. The mural arts program here in Philadelphia is the nation's largest mural program. And since 84, the program has created over 3,500 murals, and that will be another of them. As Ross Glode is aboard with a one out single. This looks like airborne ranger training tonight with all these parachutes. There's going to be a lot of this stuff. Here's Carlos Ruiz. The outfielders can almost start playing in a little bit more too. You would think. Watching the, the way the ball's going to drive, and, and they're pretty shallow right now. They see this as the night goes on. They're not going to play real deep or they shouldn't. That ball gets away from Hayes. Lowe has that sore hip, but he's still able to get it to scoring position. A wild pitch. Looked like the catcher Hayes tried to backhand that and a lot of times when you backhand them. It's hard to control it. He did. Catcher, when they call a breaking ball in the dirt, should always anticipate. I call a breaking ball, they should always anticipate the ball in the dirt. And that's why you see them more ready to slide and block a break on a fastball that you don't you don't anticipate it down like that. Carlos had a base hit in. Game one, he came up as a pitch hitter, then stayed in the ball game to to catch the final inning with Ryan Matson on the mound. In the air to left center field. Even with the wind, it's uh, pretty well hit, but then it comes flying back. Look at that. I'm telling you. Bonifacio makes the catch for the second out. That thing is way out a lot of nights here. Way out. Look at those two laughing about it. <laughs> That's what I mean. You get away with some stuff tonight. And they had a three run home run in the first inning. And here comes Bonifacio. And that ball right there that Carlos hit, that's in the seats. Deep into the seats on a hot night here. Hit some grounders or for those little dunkers. That's the way it's going to go tonight. This place is playing real big. Pete Orr 0 for 3 in game one of the day night doubleheader. But his real contributions came in the field. And you go back over the first game, and there were a lot mm. of defensive plays that changed the complexion of the game. And there have been a lot of games in the American League, American League East that are changing the complexion of the wild card race. And tonight, Tampa leads the Red Sox 4 0 in the third on the Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Rays are four games behind the Red Sox in the standings with 14 to play. And a four game series. And a four game series. That's how the Phillies caught the Brewers that one year in the wild card. Four back. 
They came in here and swept the Brewers in a four game series. And then Ned Yost was fired. Mm -hmm. Ooh. He might get it from the other dugout now. Nope. 11 and a half up. Always something to play for, though, Wills. Always some, Oh, boy, does he preach? He did it again on his radio show for the second game tonight. Swing and a miss. So the Phillies get a rudder in scoring position, but Ross Glode hangs out there. We've completed two here in Philadelphia. The second of this day night doubleheader is scoreless game. Wills, the question is this. Name the three Phillies pitchers that rank in the top six for most postseason wins since 2004. Huh. The answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. Hmm. Got a nod and a huh. Well, that's a really good question. Well. John DeSangro, you know, he's good at this stuff. John DeSangro puts a lot of thought into that. He's a hard worker. And admire that from him. Don't like it when he makes it too hard, but. Here's Sanabia to lead it off in the top of the third. One for 24 as a minor league hitter. One for 22 as a major league hitter. So he hasn't hit at, at either level, you're saying? Well, he's got a hit in, at both levels. A hit. He's one for 24 in the minors. One for 23 now here in the majors. That's not good. Well, he's got a hit though. He's got a major league hit. Sounds like a Larry Anderson hitting career. Three strikeouts for Lee. We'll never have a hit. No. <laughs> Unless we put together a hit record. <laughs> Two is unlikely. Botafacio takes a strike. It's 0 1. He grounded out to second his first time up. Well, the point being, he should be an out in the lineup. And at least in the first time up, he is. He's in the wind, the 0 2 pitch. Up high, 1 and 2. Lee's got one of those streaks going again here at home. 23 in the third without allowing a run. When you think about all the streaks he's put together this year, the scoreless streaks. <laughs> he has two overall scoreless streaks that are two of the, the highest in Philly's history. 
He had a really long road scoreless streak that was snapped last time out. Yeah, it's just surprising when you see him give up a run now. Three two pitch. Fly ball. Right center field. Slicing back toward Pence. Mayberry follows it and makes the catch. He was settled under it near the A and Auto Trader. And then had to go all the way into the alley to make that catch. See the outfielders spend a lot of time talking to each other after the balls come out there. Marlins are going to do in center field next year. Chris Coglin, Brian Peterson. Coglin, who was the rookie of the year his first season with the Marlins, has not been the same since and is hurt again. Yeah. Well, he looked like he was going to be a good hitter. Looper over towards short, caught by Rollins, and an easy inning. For Cliff Lee. Strike out and a pop out to uh, fly out to center and a pop out to short. We go to the bottom of the third here at Philadelphia. Cliff Lee will lead it off when we get back. Southwest.com by Mazda, Zoom Zoom, and by WB Mason. Who but WB Mason for amazingly low office product prices? Bottom of the third, scoreless ball game. Can't miss a Cliff Lee at bat. Here he comes. And he takes outside. It's 1 0. Oh. He sure enjoys them, especially with a right hander out there. I think it's safe to say that you wonder when he comes up in a game what he's going to do next. That ball was hammered. <laughs> he really hit that hard too. When wind just knocked it down. So Rollins gives him a chance to get back to the dugout before he heads to the plate. Zanabi is singing to the music that's being played overhead as Jimmy Rollins comes to the plate. That's what it looked like. He's also thinking, boy, I'm glad that wind's blowing it. Center field. And Peterson will make the catch again. How would you like to win tickets to every Eagles home game this season? Enter for the chance to win Eagles season tickets right now at CSNPhilly.com. 
Eagles be on the road this weekend. Take on the Atlanta Falcons. Feels like it's an October Eagles night here. Is that cool? It did turn into fall this afternoon. <laughs> 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 who's that? I don't know who's Warber, the camera. Or I don't know who's warmer, the camera or Mike. <laughs> Outside. 2 0 to John Mayberry. He singled his last time up. Has a postseason feel to it tonight with this chilly weather. It's a light schedule around Major League Baseball. There are four games going on in the American League, including that Red Sox uh, Rays game that we showed, we told you about. There are three other games in the National League. See, the Mets game is a final. Washington blasted the Mets 10 1. Mets are 1 and 8 on the homestand. You see where the Rays and the Red Sox are in the bottom of the third. The Red Sox are threatening. That's where the Braves are this weekend. Or no, no, the Mets, the Mets go to Atlanta. Check swing, they'll appeal. No swing, says Tom Hallion. Yeah, New York starts a series at Atlanta tomorrow night. Toward left center field, and again, the wind's going to hang it up there for Brian Peterson. Phillies have hit some balls hard so far in the first three innings, but nothing to show for it. Sanabi has allowed two hits over three. We go to the fourth. Cliff Lee has allowed two hits over three. Cycle papers, which perform as brilliantly as regular paper. Who but W.B. Mason? Go to the top of the fourth. Sanavia has held the Phillies to two hits so far. He's, I don't want to say he's been hit hard, but the Phillies have hit some balls, you know, that on a normal day where the wind isn't blowing in, it could have been pretty dangerous. Yeah, very good point. Wind has helped him out. But that's okay. I mean, if you're a pitcher, you take the elements, yeah. good or bad. Absolutely right. Mike Stanton leads it off against uh, Cliff Lee, and it's 0 2. Not a good hair day today, Sarge. Yeah, well, you got to have hair for it to, <laughs> to blow. <laughs> Fine with me. Well, 
One and two the count. And a call. Strike three. Number 1300 for Cliff Lee in his career. And it's the fourth of the night. And he just kind of kept Mike Stanton way off balance and kept him guessing. Yeah, set him up with that inside pitch there. And then he goes away. Little cutter as it comes right back. Gives up on that pitch. Time to take a look at our Mazda League leaders, National League leaders in home wins. And Lee is right at the top of that list. Tied with Clayton Kershaw. Part of the reason why he has 16 victories this year. To the count. Lopez fly to left his first time up. Lee now with uh, 215 strikeouts this year and 1300 exactly. For his career. One two pitch. Hit hard to shortstop. That skips right on one hop to Rollins. Two outs. One of the things as a hitter, you know that he's going to be a, around the plate, just wondering what particular pitch it's going to be fastball, cutter, breaking ball. Liner to center field, and Mayberry will play it on a hop. Third hit of the night for the Marlins. It's going to be a, an inspiring feeling if you're Lee that you've gotten to the point in your career where on most nights, 90% of the nights, that all of your pitches are going to be around the strike zone. Right. You know, and then you learn too, though, when you don't have your good stuff that you're able to get through uh, particular innings. And when you have your good stuff, that's when it becomes fun for the pitcher of the caliber of a uh, Lee, Hamels, or even a Holiday. That's everything working. You can just throw any pitch up and get a strike, or get her swinging and missing. I think yesterday Doc was that way. Oh boy. I mean you're talking about getting strikeouts guys shaking their heads ball in the dirt that they're swinging at. Swing and a miss he got him. Finishes up the fourth with his fifth strikeout of the night leads one over at first after a two out single by Omar Infante. So Lee's got it working tonight five strikeouts for the first four still no score.
pitcher. Does seem to throw that change up, moves away. A little bit of a slider, not much. And there's a strikeout for Snobby. It's just his second one of this ball game. Sarge, I joked with you when you came in. I said, Sarge, it's like playing a game at Candlestick Park. And you said it's exactly <laughs> like Candlestick Park. Well, you got that wind blowing. It's really cold. The only way it might be a little bit different if it was a kind of damp, a little bit damp in San Francisco with the cold weather. But actually, I think the pitchers are a lot stronger when you have weather like this, and especially with the flag blowing in. All right. Now, you you agree the Phillies have hit some balls hard tonight. Oh, yeah. Definitely that may have been out on other days. They've squared some balls up certainly maybe off the wall in the gap for sure. One ball one strike to count to Hunter Pence. But what we've, we've seen over the first few innings is that the end of the outfielders have changed their alignment. I mean they're shallow right now. Well you should play shallow that way you take away some of those line drives there but the ball's hanging up there in the air because of the wind. So one ball and two strikes the count as a hitter. Is there anything you can do. All you want is line drives after line drives. You're trying to keep that ball out of the air. Ground balls will work. You know if you get it in the air good chance the ball not going to go out of the ballpark and it's probably going to be caught. Well I, I think about candlestick and look at the wind and I I guess I just I don't envy Willie Mays Willie oh. McCovey you. More impressive for Mays to hit as many home runs and a right handed hitter. You know, McCovey, left handed hitter, the ball would really blow that way most of the time to right field. Kind of a crosswind. But so, for Mays, though, he got to where he'd be inside outing balls and hit balls out to right field to take advantage of that win. So a left handed hitter tonight could still have somewhat of an advantage. Yeah, if you're hitting it low, definitely. No, up in the air, a high fly ball. Look, might get knocked down. And that's the way some of the other balls have been, even that haven't been as high. One ball, two strikes the count to Hunter Pence. No secret. Anytime he gets two strikes, they're trying to get him to swing at that high fastball. Very aggressive hitter. You know, and over time, he'll lay off of that particular pitch, get it down a little lower. Back to back strikeouts now for Sanabi. Good change up. About getting some runners on and see how he acts. Look at the movement though. That little two seamer throws from the side as that ball and takes a lot off of it, giving you the fastball kind of arm motion and it's a change up. Just dies away from the bat. Another change up and Banya is out in front. You know, change up after change up. I mean, usually as a hitter, you're going to move up toward him. Other than that, you want to make him get the ball up. He just struck out the side. Threw that fastball at 91 miles an hour, way out of the zone. Four strikeouts for Sanabia. Some frustrated hitters right now as we go to the fifth.
appreciated game used items and is now featuring a unique limited edition plaque commemorating Cliff Lee's first big league home run. For a list of available items and more info, email merch at phillies.com. Line drive to left field, Dominguez. Here comes Ibanez, and he knocks it down. It'll be a hit. Fourth hit for the Marlins. Speaking of that Cliff Lee plaque with some dirt, there it is. His home run against Tommy Hansen. Nice. Been, That's pretty nice, really. I would think it's something nice that could for Bunny one no, also. No doubt. Brett Hayes is the hitter. He hit into a double play his first time up. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. Sixty pitches, forty-four strikes, sixteen balls. Now, one of the reasons too, the hitter can be aggressive. See all the strikes that he's throwing. He's not afraid to throw that fastball, and also that breaking pitch. Well, there is the fastball. I think Abanez in left field might be a little bit too deep there, especially with that wind, the way that is blowing. That ball that would be up should be knocked down. Any of the line drives should be able to catch it when you're playing it. Strikeout looking. Another one. That's uh, number six on the night for Lee. And Eduardo Perez didn't like that one either. Yeah, he's probably thinking that ball a, a little bit high. I'm thinking that ball's pretty good pitch. Borderline. As a hitter, though, you wouldn't have liked that. No. You might have hit it. Well, when you're on my side, though, <laughs> got to have it. Sanabi is up there to try to sacrifice a runner at the scoring position. And he bunts it foul, one ball and one strike. When you're hoping that he bunts it hard, maybe right back to one of the fielders, be able to turn the double play. Ball would have to be hit back firm or bunted back firm to them. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get the bunt down in fair territory for that to happen. Let's see if he can bunt one of these hooks 12 to 6. Get him with that curveball or even maybe that high fastball. High fastball, but it foul. Seven strikeouts. Yeah. No, and I say that too on the high fastball, you get a chance to get exactly what you got there or maybe even a pop up. Good pitch. This Saturday night, watch the Union's exciting playoff push as they battle the top team in the conference. The Columbus crew. They'll be at the Philadelphia Union. Pre-game coverage starts Saturday night at 7. Only on the Comcast Network. Two outs for Bonifacio. He's 0 for 2. Grounded out to second. Fly to center. Softly hit to second base. And Lee will work out of uh, a leadoff single, and he's through five. So his scoreless streak here at home is up to 26 consecutive innings. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Phillies looking for a little offense.
runs have been tough to come by here in this nightcap of the day night doubleheader. Ross Glow to lead it off. It'll be Glowed, Ruiz, and Orr. And it's no balls and one strike to Glowed. Hey, this kid is throwing change ups after change ups. Decent fastball that he throws about 91 or so. Haven't seen a lot of sliders, and the ones that I've seen have not had good break to it. So far, he's been able to pitch with good location. Little looper into left field, a base hit. Load has two hits tonight. Well, let's take a, a glance up at what's going on at Coca Cola Park in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Kevin Franzen, a fly ball to right field. And this is going to score Freddie Galvis to make it two to one. Nice slide by Freddie. And the Iron Pack fans, and there's more than 7,000 on hand with their rally towels. Wow. You know, they're enjoying it. It's two to one. That game's in the top of the fifth. It's the Governor's Cup Finals. It's the best of five. It's now down to a best of three with the series tied at one. Game four is tomorrow, and there are tickets still available. You can purchase your tickets by going to ironpigsbaseball.com. Or by calling 610-841-PIGS. Two and zero, the count to Ruiz. Sarge, we're midway through September, and I wondered, by looking at some of the the hitters, are they changing bats at this point to maybe using a lighter bat at this point in the ball game? I read a story where Brian yeah. McCann has changed the weight of his bat because he was struggling. Well, there's a lot of time to start that season off. I mean, for instance, we have 34, 35 ounces. When you get to September, you are a little bit tired. You would switch that maybe to about 32, 33. So you do drop down in ounces. The problem here, though, most of the guys are already at 31 to 32 ounces, and you don't want to bat much lighter than that. So back in your day, 34 35 ounces you can back off to a 33 32 correct now it's difficult to do that I would think so because they're so light anyway Ruiz scalds it to right field but Stanton is there as the wind holds it up oh not only did it hold it up it blew the ball right back to him that ball started off near right center I'd like to see that ball hit right at it that same ball and see if he could catch up with it Peter struck out his first time. I just wondered if, uh, you know, if guys went to a cupped bat instead of a, a normal bat, cup bat. Sometimes is guys feel like it's lighter at the end. Oh, it is where the barrel is. No doubt it is. That's why they do that. And then they can kind of get it through the strike zone a little easier. Well, you're always going to get a little tired toward the end of the season. Nothing wrong with dropping down with a few ounces, but a lot of guys don't like choking up. Which would make the bat a little bit lighter. But most of the guys do, Tom. I mean, they're working out after the game, lifting weight, so maybe the bat doesn't get as heavy. And maybe muscles are a little bit tired, making it difficult to get that bat right through the zone. Back toward the middle, knocked down by Sanabia. He goes to second for one, that's all they'll get. And he just robbed Pete Orr of a base hit. Oh, that ball just drilled right up the middle. Hard ball to run on. Don't know whether or not he's going to catch it or not. Take a look at it as that ball drilled right back up the middle, went off of his body there. You can see how Globe's running over there to second base. No chance for him to get there. Just a force out. Chopper left side for Lee backhanded in the hole by Murphy not in time. He smelled a hit. And he puts a runner in scoring position. Why wow, that's huge too though. Well being able to get that hit. Guy never stops hustling. 
That's the reason why he got that hit, hit in the hole, didn't take anything for granted. Boy, guy takes a good stroke there, Lee, on top of that ball as it goes right through the hole. Pretty good play. That ball one hopped by then, Lee right across the back, and he can run. Take a look at him as he is looking at that ball. And that's the correct way to go through the bag. You run right through the bag. You didn't see him jump at the bag like some players do, which makes you get there slower. Run right through the bag. That's big, too, because it puts a runner in scoring position for the top of the order in a scoreless game. And now the uh, outfielders come in a little bit more. Rollins takes inside. The way this game's going, a base hit, or is a good runner, Sam Wellsend. Needs to have, oh, yeah. Needs to have that little secondary lead and be able to be off when that ball is hit. You know, the thing with two outs, don't have to look around. Whenever that ball is hit, you're taking off. Had good location. We'll give him that fastball. Look how shallow he is, Sarge, the center oh, fielder. Well, yeah, they're going to play shallow because of that wind knocking down the balls. The ball get hit in the gap, though, could get through. Rollins is going to hope the wind takes this one out of play. Nope. Dominguez tracks it down. And the Phillies leave a couple here in the fifth. No runs, two hits, two men left. We go to the sixth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Still, Marlins nothing, Phillies nothing. Needed to pick me up the last two seasons. He was there to answer the call. When they needed perfection, he was perfect. And when they needed to kick off last postseason with the bang, he sounded off in a very big way. The call went out in Houston, and Doc came out firing. His Texas size domination earned him his 20th career shutout, gave the Phillies their fifth straight postseason berth. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Now more than ever, we're here for you every step of the way. Well, yesterday, Roy Halladay led the Phils to the postseason for the fifth consecutive year. It was businesslike, as everybody reported. And uh, you were down there, Sarge. I mean, it really was businesslike. I mean, he became the first pitcher in 23 years to shut out the Astros in Houston in a 1 0 game. He joined Oral Hershiser. I'm telling you, just the pitches that he was throwing to those hitters. They were going back shaking their heads as if they had never seen those type of pitches before. The doctor 
Well, let's face it, he made a house call, and boy, was it awesome. One nothing victory. Well, we mentioned this stat the other night when Cole Hamels was on the mound. First time since the 85 Dodgers, the Phillies coming into this past week had three pitchers with an earned run average of 2.70 or less. It's the first time in Major League Baseball that there have been three pitchers on one staff with those numbers. The 85 Dodgers with Oral Hershiser, Bob Welch, and Fernando Valenzuela. Wow. Three pretty good pitchers. So it's Lee at 2.38, Halliday, and Hamels. Ground ball to first, backhanded by Globe. Well, in between innings, the Fanatic uh, is sending Jack McKeon off with one last skit. It's Trader Jack getting ready to put a little water on that cigar. Tr Trader Jack does love his cigars. There's Jack, he's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. The uh, Trader Jack impersonator wearing the old teal helmet that the Marlins wore during their uh, first few years of existence. They will uh, change their name officially to the Miami yep. Marlins next year, and they will have new uniforms, new colors. I don't know what those colors will be. Well, the main thing is they have a good product out there in that field. That's going to get the fans. To come out. You know, and interesting enough, I mean, Florida that gets a lot of rain, haven't been rained out of one game this year. Good drainage. Yeah, they get a lot of showers, but uh, still able to play the game. One ball, two strikes the count to Stanton. Got him. Curve ball, he had no chance. Eight strikeouts for Lee. Well, Comcast sponsors the Be a Fanatic About Reading program. The Fanatic encourages children to read for a minimum of 15 minutes a day. Teachers can register for the program, and it's open for grades K through 8. Materials include bookmarks and pencils for each student, plus the opportunity to win a Fanatic literacy visit for the school. Email fandev at phillies.com. Lopez swings at the first pitch, fouls it straight back. Boy, he's getting that ball right on the right handers. Hands getting it away from the bigger part of the bat. Gets ahead of him. He slips that curveball in, and the curveball coming up almost looks like that fastball. Good pitch. If he gets something out of the zone, he can get him out. He did. He was up a little bit, tipped into the glove of Ruiz. Nine strikeouts for Cliff Lee. A one, two, three, sixth inning. He's retired six in a row. He has four strikeouts along the way during that span. We go to the bottom of the sixth here in Philly.
provider of the Phillies and by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Home half of the sixth inning. And Sanabia, in his own way, has kind of matched Cliff Lee. He's allowed just four hits. He doesn't have the nine strikeouts, but he struck out four. He's left four runners on base. John Mayberry leads it off. Maybe start off with a double. See if they can get a man from second. Nobody out. Well, this is certainly a game to manufacture, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How about that one? It's a bullet down the left field line. Fair foul. It's a fair ball home run. Just inside the pole. Number 14 for Mayberry, and the Phillies are on the board. That ball hit a ton. Line drive as that ball gets out of here. Young Mayberry, the pitchers like to test him. On the inside part of the plate, and boy, did he catch it. And he caught it really good, shaking hands as he's going in. Big run there for Cliff Lee. Wanted a double, but hey, we'll take it double time as he ends up getting that ball out of the ballpark. Ball is just crushed looking at it all the way. And he just won $300 for Karen Bernson of Medford, New Jersey, courtesy of the McDonald's home run jackpot. It's really tough to keep a ball fair with this wind and to get it out of the ballpark. And he hit it at the right level, right speed, everything. Probably trying to hustle his way for a hit. He's thrown out, one out. Well, that wind actually may have helped it to stay uh, fair. Looks like it had some hook going on it. Boy, but did he crush this. Take a look at it. The sound will tell you where that ball is going. It got out by plenty. To get back up into the rows. Line drives will get out any time when the wind is blowing. The balls that are up are the ones that they knock down. Nice going. Here's Hunter Pence with one out and a run across the plate. Well, that's his little slider, a little cutter that he throws. When you hit fastballs off of a pitcher, they're going to switch around and try and use something else. Maybe feeling that that pitch is not as good as they think. Side knocked off the glove of Lopez, and Pence is going to try for two because nobody went after it. Uh, Infante stayed at his spot, Lopez stayed at his spot, and Stanton, quite frankly, was too deep to come over and get it. 37 doubles for Pence. The well, Lopez, though, first baseman after it's knocked down. He's got to run to try and get that ball. You see him just jogging there. By the time now, right fielder comes in. That's way too late. Good hustling, however, for Hunter Pence. Safe at second. Safe with New York life. Randy St. Clair coming out to the mound to talk to Sanabia. Ciszek is warming up in the pen. That's got to be frustrating for a manager to sit and watch that. I mean, somebody's got to go after that ball. Well, nobody did. Again, they're actually spectating. When you miss a ball, you go after it as hard as you can. I mean, it went off of Lopez's glove. Not all that far. Everybody seemed to be looking, except for Hunter Pence, as he was hustling. Fonte, the second baseman. Stanton was going over toward the line, thinking that ball was heading to the line. So he had a redirect himself and come after it. He he did come after it, but yeah. he was just too far. Well, I think one of the infielders and Lopez first baseman when it hits his glove, you you gotta go for it. You gotta go. One ball, one strength to count. By the way, Pence with that double has hit a nine straight.
pretty good pitch to hit. High fastball, just a little bit late. I want to try and get started a little bit earlier. When you start earlier, you don't swing at as many bad pitches, and they've been getting him out on that high fastball up in the zone. Ground ball right side. Pence goes to third. to run sitting out there for the Phillies. They lead it one nothing thanks to the home run in this inning by John Mayberry. Fourteen home runs for Mayberry. Forty six runs batted in. Okay, he's had a phenomenal year to be able to come up and do that. And you know, there were times when he came up wasn't playing Every day, still not playing every day. Sure, it's making an impact though. Start hitting that ball out of the ballpark. Not only does your team notice, other teams notice. Well, we said 14 home runs, 46 runs batted in. You figure if he played a whole year, didn't spend time in the minors, he'd have more than 20 home runs at this point. And he's going to get smarter. Well, this is kind of a time for him where he's coming in. Sure, he'd like to prove himself. He's been unproven. So, this for him, he's got to realize now, hey, I can play up here. Not only that, I can contribute. It's a great feeling to come in that locker room and not have to look at the lineup card and knowing that you're going to be in it daily. As opposed to the players that don't play every day, sometimes managers will let you know, hey, you're going to be in there tomorrow. And sometimes they don't. Swing and a miss. Sign is retired. Home run by John Mayberry has given the Phillies the lead finally here in the sixth. It's one nothing. So Cliff Lee has a lead as we go to the seventh. Well, on the night when fall arrived at 
the Delaware Valley with these cool temperatures. Good ball game here. Figured the only way anybody was going to hit a home run here tonight is somebody hit a baby down the line and kept it really low. Well, that's the only run in the game because that's what John Mayberry just did on that fastball game. We're running in on him a little bit. Look at Cliff Lee with nine punch outs through six innings. And he throws a strike to start the seventh wheels as Omar Infante leads it off. It'll be Infante, Donnie Murphy, Matt Dominguez. Phillies up 1 0. It's just fire and strikes. You know, he's thrown 81 pitches, 60 strikes, 21 balls. And he had a, well, a fairly long first inning, around 20 yeah. pitches. And since then, mowing them down. Ball. I believe he fell tipped that, it. Yeah, he, he did. <laughs> Phil Cuzzy didn't call it right away, and the dugout was helping him. They're very helpful. Yeah, it's like he looked over and said, Thank you, I have it. Last three games. Halliday, Kendrick, and Lee. One earned run, 22 strikeouts in 20 innings. Good thing the way they've been scoring. Look out. Ruiz has got it Whoa. gauged and makes the catch. <laughs> That was a heck of a play he just made. That <laughs> looked routine and it wasn't. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They were each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. That one little kid was really bundled up in that shot. Yeah. Need to be tonight. First game crowd didn't come bundled up and they were there were a lot of shivering people headed for different exits. <laughs> people were leaving early in that game because they were cold. Now the second game crowd here, they came ready for this. They, sure they knew did. they yeah. knew. Or they bought some stuff. Or they bought some stuff, right. First game started, you know, it was fairly warm. Didn't end that way. What in one the count? What in two the count? One of the more remarkable stats that Cliff Lee has put together this year. You know, even beyond the 16 and 7 record, the 2.36 earned run average, the 220 strikeouts. Lode gave that a look, but it's back a few rows. He's thrown 217 innings this year, Wills. Of those 217, 185 and a third are scoreless. That is remarkable. Every once in a while, they'll have an inning where he'll give up some runs. Well, there's six shutouts leading in Major League Baseball. 2 2 pitch. Another foul ball. That one's heading toward the upper deck. He and Roy Halliday are just amazing when you think about how good they are and how consistent they are. And then Cole Hamels factors in there how good he's become. And those three guys. And then Oswald, you know, you, they're just trying to get him going to the, the point where he can be consistent. And what a year for Vance Worley. Three two pitch. Grounded foul. Uh, Murphy's giving a pretty good at bat here now, fouling off a lot of pitches. And he finally got him to hit one in the air to straightaway center field. Mayberry started back, now he comes in. Two outs here in the seventh. Remember his last outing, Cliff Lee tried to bunt that ball, and the ball got a piece of his finger. Well, it hasn't affected him all tonight at all tonight. He has two one, two, three innings. And every time the Phillies retire the opposing team, one, two, three. Comcast make a contribution to Phillies charities. 
Well, these baseballs brought to you by the Xfinity HD Triple Play. Your complete lineup for digital TV, lightning fast internet, and home phone. Anyway, that finger, it swelled up after he had that cut. But he told me the other day in Houston, he said, no, it's fine. <laughs> Through a bullpen session. Sure. Didn't, of course. Didn't it's have any issues. Of course it's fine. But he running that ground ball out and got himself a base hit. Fly ball right field. Pence circles around it. And it's another one, two, three hitting for Cliff Lee. So he adds to the Xfinity total. We have played six and a half here at Citizens Bank Park. It's time to stretch. He's already in the dugout. He's got a one nothing lead. Answer. Wheels. Wheels name the three Phillies pitchers that rank in the top six for the most postseason wins since 2004. I don't know <laughs> if this is right, but I'm going to go with Cole Hamels. You are correct. Cliff Lee. You are correct. Roy Oswald. Where's your assistant? Is your assistant here tonight? Did no. he help you no, out? I got that. One? that. I got that. Log back on the Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge Stump the Pants. Roosevelt had all those decisions, well, most of those decisions with Houston. Of he, yeah, he had all five. Yeah. yeah. That was the tricky part of that question. Well, I shouldn't say all five. He did have most of them with the, uh, the Astros. Steve Ciszak is the new pitcher for the Marlins. Take it over for Sanabia, who did pitch well. Oswald got a win for the Phillies against the Giants last year. So he had mm -hmm. uh, four of his five with the Astros. Right. I didn't know the numbers, but I figured they had to be the guys. Carlos Ruiz leads off the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Ruiz or in Lee. Not a bad idea for Carlos to show bunt. And I say that only because it's. With the way the wind has been blowing, hits have been tough to come by, although the Phillies have six. Especially for Carlos. He hit one ball tonight, would have been a home run any other night. One ball, one strength that counts. He takes a strike. The ball he hit the right center, he hit really, that really hard, too, and that got knocked down. John Mayberry's home run is the difference right now in this ball game. That and Cliff Lee's pitching. Grounder right side. Easy play for Infante. Powerade Ion 4. Focus, hustle, hydrate, and believe. The day started, temperatures were in the mid 70s. You probably broke a pretty good sweat even walking around, so you would need your Powerade. Game two, well, it began uh, nearly 20 degrees cooler. I'm feeling even cooler than that because of this wind. 
That guy is as warm as could be. He's ready. A lot of logos on there. Fanatic helmet. Warmth. That was a peace sign that that uh, gentleman had. That's his hat. It was a peace sign. It's nice. It's a nice thought. Wanted to the count or wave. Did that change up? See wheels. Oh yeah. Very clever. Back to back change ups by C Shack, and there are two outs. Sanabi tonight had a really good change up. That, that, you can see why they like him. Oh, now that's a good hat. That's the kind of hat that you want to wear on a cool day. Keep the ears warm. Good thing they were in stock, huh? For that family. <laughs> Lee is an infield single his last time up. And he's down at the count. No balls and two strikes. He's gonna have to look out for that changeup right now. He's hacking away. He drove one ball to deep left center his first time up, and the wind knocked it down. And he hit the ball in the hole last time, legged it out for a hit. Shortstop hole. Challenged him with a fastball. He appreciates that. Chokes up a little bit. Red Sox uh, scored a run against the Rays, but the Rays have tacked on two more. Their lead is now six to one in the bottom of the six. Boy, wow. that race, everybody. I know I thought it was over. Mm -hmm. I think most people thought that race was over in the American League. It was going to be the Yankees and the Red Sox. And their pitching started to get really good. Tampa Bay's and the Red Sox started to have a lot of problems and injuries. Now it's a whole new ball game. Ground ball to second. It's hit pretty hard by Lee. Hustling all the way. The side is retired in order here in the bottom of the seventh. So Lee. We'll take his helmet, put it back in the uh, bat rack, get himself ready to go back out and pitch the top of the eighth with a one nothing lead. Today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you and buy Jeep brand. We don't just make SUVs, we make history. 
Phillies lead at 1-0. They've had some remarkable games this year. Blowouts where they've shut the other team out, and they've also had some tight games like this one. Phillies also, with their victory earlier today, picked up their 50th home victory. They're four away from last year when they had 54. They won't be able to match 1977, but with a good homestand, they could move into second place all time in most home wins. Well, the 70. 6 77 and 78 teams are really special 75 too because they really started to come on where you could see the team was going to get pretty good. Michael Martinez steps into the ball game to play third for Pete Orr. And Gabby Sanchez is going to pinch hit for Brett Hayes. John Buck is in the on deck circle so he'll come on to catch and the first pitch to Sanchez in there for strike. We've have said that a lot today. Lee's in pretty good shape pitch pitch count wise 96 pitches. His wheel said he had a tough first inning 22 pitches but since that time. Pretty Method good methodical. Yep. And Phil cuz he's been a strike caller since the first inning too and he started to hear it from their bench but not abusive. No. But if it's on the corners you know the, 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 he has a good plate I think. And for a veteran pitcher like Cliff Lee, he deserves a strike zone he gets. We had Sanchez way out in front of a curveball. Ground ball. Right side, big hop for Chase Utley, one out here in the eighth. Now the Phillies sold out of season tickets this season. Did you miss your opportunity? With the deposit, fans can now be placed on the priority wait list for 2012 season ticket plans. Deposits do not guarantee a plan, but do hold a place on the priority wait list. See the ticket section at Phillies.com for details. John Buck the pinch hitter. Buck started game one of this day night doubleheader. 13 for 40 against Lee for his career. <laughs> Just drops that hook on him. Starting with a change up for a called strike and he didn't like and he drops a hook on him. Now if you're a hitter what's coming next. Another hook. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number 10 for Cliff Lee. Well, that was something to watch. 18th career game of 10 strikeouts or more. He has half of them this season. Change up. Curveball. What's he going to throw? 0 2. I'll try another one. Swings over a curveball. There you go. Here's Bonifacio. He's 0 for 3. Bunts one toward first. It's a fair ball. Nope, it's a foul ball. Glowed. He couldn't get to it before it spun foul. And it did from here look like it spun foul at the last moment. Because <laughs> he was trying to catch his, his hat. Yeah. Because he was making the call. <laughs> He's running down the line and the wind blew his hat off. Watch Phil Cuzzy, the home plate umpire. He's gonna run down there. Whoop. No, he just did well as <laughs> it's funny. There it is. First pitch strikes tonight, 21 of 28 for Lee. It was a good job by Glow, too. He came charging down that line to try and keep that ball fair because he knew he had Bonifacio in his sights to pick it up and tag it. The 0 2 pitch. And a called strike three. 11 strikeouts for Lee. <laughs> A one, two, three, eighth inning. He's retired ten in a row. What a night for Cliff Lee. He needs three more outs to pick up his 17th victory, and he has been right around the plate the entire night. Smiles all around here in Philadelphia.
spaces and on site catering available year round for many types of functions, both large and small. Take advantage of all the ballpark has to offer tours, Panavision usage. Call the special events department at 215 218 5100. We go to the eighth, John Buck with his helmet all designed and shine brightly. Is the new catcher for the Marlins, Edward Mujica. Is the new pitcher, Jimmy Rollins, leads it off. It'll be Rollins, Mayberry, and Utley. Mujica, nine and five. He certainly has been a cherry picker this year. I think throws a lot of splits. That's his out pitch, and he is durable. He will pitch a lot for them. I know Cliff Lee looks unhittable. It'd be really nice to get another run or two. Make it easier in the night so another guy doesn't go out there and have to try and pitch a one nothing complete game shutout. You know, those are kind of tough. Exciting at the end if they do it. They're very exciting at the end if they do it. But to that up until that point, they're nerve wracking. Because, you know, you really love to see them get that magic number down to two, and then tomorrow night maybe something could happen. Rollins down the right field line. And it's going to hook foul. He'll get that split now after that swing. Well, that's well, two to me. No, he, I'm not saying he wouldn't throw it because he hits an out pitch for Mojica. And yep. there it is. After that fastball that he threw that he almost got a home run on, then he's going to come back with his out pitch, even though it's two two. Well, the man of the hour, one of them anyway, John Mayberry. Cliff Lee's the other one. Mayberry is due up. Well, you, the only way you're going to hit a home run here tonight is this way. He got a fastball, came running in on him a little bit, and he hit a low screamer just fair down the left field line, and that's it tonight. There have been other balls that have hit by both sides probably that had a chance to be homers tonight on a normal night, but not with this wind. Mayberry has two hits tonight. His average at 268. Keep catching myself when I look down at the Marlins notes to see who's pitching tomorrow for them. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Ground ball is short. Bonnie Murphy throws low and Lopez is able to pick it. Timey Garcia and he'll be in another uniform. Right. It's not Javier Vasquez, although he is pitching tomorrow for the Marlins, but he's going to do that down in Washington. Cardinals have had an off day here in Philadelphia today, watching this weather change. I'm sure, a lot of a lot of them were out playing golf somewhere, got spritzed on a little bit, and then hope they brought their windbreakers. Between the first baseman and the second baseman, a two out single. They had a high fastball, look like, and hammered it. Although it doesn't matter at this point, nothing has changed tonight with who the number two seed is in the National League. The Brewers and the Diamondbacks are all tied up uh, wins, losses. But what does change if if you know the magic number obviously for the division but the Phillies if they can win another game have just tacked on two more wins correct to make it more and more difficult for anybody to have a better record than them and that's one of the another one of the things they want to accomplish have home field advantage throughout they already have it in the World Series if they get there and that's their goal is to get there and win it but the best record in the National League We'll give them home field in the division series and the championship series, and it won't matter 
It doesn't matter anyway who they play, but no. But you love to have the last at bat and the energy of this crowd because it can't be matched anywhere else. Really. Pence takes low one and two. Now if the Brewers and the Diamondbacks tie record wise at the end of the year they'll go to the head to head matchups between the two as Pence is down on strike. So the side is retired here in the eighth. No runs one hit. It was a two out single by Utley. Now all the drama that's left is whether Cliff Lee can finish this baby off. He has a one nothing lead as we go to the ninth. Number to clinch the National League East is down to three. Cliff Lee warming up to try to get it down to two. He has the same routine in between every inning. <laughs> Sprints out to the mound, circles his arm around, takes a shadow practice uh, toss over to second, and then goes up and gets ready for his warm up. Touches both pant legs. Yep. Hits a rosin bag. Does that count as nine more pitches? <laughs> Nine easy pitches. Yeah. Brian Peterson leads it off. These folks could sense it. You can hear it in every cheer. Well, they love this guy. Why not? You know, think of the reaction when he came back. What's not to like about Cliff Lee? <laughs> you know this guy's really diving on him, and he just decided, all right, you know, you you, you spoiled a pretty good pitch that last one. You're really diving. We're going to come inside, and that's it's a good pitch. Now, a lot of times you go away after that, but when a guy's diving like that, you know, he thinks it's a lot closer to him than it is because his body's headed towards the plate. Got him. <laughs> That's Four unbelievable. Strikeouts. I mean, he just threw those where he wants to. Just zip, zip, and then I'm gonna push him back and get him out of way. Like I'll just waste one here, and but we want to get him out of way, and here we go. And he just freezes him after that pitch inside. Little cutter. That's just different. Mike Stanton's the hitter. A curveball. Way out of the strike zone. He's had, pretty, he's had some luck with Stanton and Lopez tonight with curveballs because both these guys are so aggressive, especially the guy on deck. Ooh. Things change sometimes in the night, then. Got a lot of those tonight. 
to it. Oh, the count to stand. Line drive left field. Ibanez is over. Diving play. He got it. Two outs here in the night. What a catch. You want to talk about an outfielder needing to react quickly? That ball was on a close line. Right out to left field. It got out there fast. Yeah, the wind didn't affect that one. That's a, just a great play by Rule Ibanez to preserve the shutout because obviously if he gets by him it's a double. And that is a typical Mike Stanton BB. What a play. Two outs. Lopez a swing and a miss. It's 0-1. This guy is just going to swing as hard as he can to tie it. And he may just go slow and slower to him. Lee already has six shutouts this year. The last one to have seven, Steve Carlton at 72. Oh, and to the count. Never thought I'd see a year like 72. But this guy is amazing. Carlton at eight that year. The 0 2 pitch in the air to left field. Ibanez going back to the warning track to the wall, no. and the ball game is tied. How about that? Unbelievable. He just said, wow. Wow is right. It's a 1 1 game. That guy, it's all he was trying to do there swing as hard as he could to tie the game, and he hit it through the wind. That is remarkable. And you could see what he was trying to do, and nobody knew that more than Lee. Oh, boy. Place is going crazy. Oh, it's just up in the strike zone, and he all, every at bat that guy Lopez has had tonight, he has swung as hard as he could to pull the ball. And it finally worked for him. Two strikes. Wow. Off the mound. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. It's a 1 1 ball game. Lopez just tied it up with his eighth home run of the year. He's been swinging for the fences all night long. And he finally connected with two outs and two strikes in the ninth. And get reports direct from Atlanta on Eagles pregame live, plus the expert analysis of our panel, including former Eagle Trey Thomas and Derek Gunn's exclusive one on one with Michael Vick. Total Eagles coverage Sunday night starting at 7, only on Comcast Sports. Well, I didn't think we'd see a bottom of the ninth inning, <laughs> particularly when there were two outs and two strikes on Jose Lopez. Mm -hmm. But well, he, here we are. Well, he thought he threw him something slow there, and it looked like he threw him a high fastball out over the plate. Maybe it was a cutter. But anyway, that's all that guy was trying to do. Every single swing he took tonight was trying to hit a home run, and he hit one into that wind too. You know how hard he hit that thing? Because that thing had some height to it too. Ibanez hits it into foul territory on the first base side. He'll be back into the seats, and it's 0-2. It'll be Ibanez, Glode, and Ruiz. They're scheduled to bat against Mojica. Michael Schwimmer's up and thrown in the bullpen for the Phillies.
One away. Three strikeouts now for Mojica. Good split. Seen a lot of this guy over the years with San Diego and Florida. And he, he can throw that split for especially left handed hitters. Figure that's it for, for Lee. They're not going to send him out there in the 10th if he goes extra in. Well, he threw 117 pitches tonight. This will be a really tough no decision. There he is, jacket on. His night is done. What a great job he did here tonight. Chopper off the plate. Tough play for Infante. Bare hands. He threw him out. Two outs. That's a heck of a play. Glowed limping as he goes past the bag. You know, he's had that hip problem all year and he did everything he could to try and beat it, but body's not willing. See how hard he's running. He's trying. Terrific play. Just got him. Another look at it. Carlos takes a strike at the knees. It's 0 1. Carlos 0 for 3. Fly to left, fly to right, grounded to second. Trying to get on. Martinez is up next. Oh, and two the count. That happen. Baseball. Two outs, two strikes. Second time that happened to the Phillies this year. Ian Desmond got him with one in uh, Washington with two outs and two strikes. Tie a game. Gets Matson. No, Bastardo. Bastardo. Right, Bastardo. Yep. yep. Swing and a miss. Then we're going to go extra innings. Four strikeouts for Mojica in two innings of work. He retires the Phillies in order. It's on to the tenth. Some free baseball here at Citizens Bank Park at a 1-1 game. Well, here's our WB Mason delivery of the game. 0 2, crowd on their feet, hope the game's over. Yeah, watching that thing, I think it was a cutter. And it was up, and he just nailed it. Jose Lopez. And 
as a result of that WB Mason delivery of the game, Cliff Lee gets a no decision with one of the. Oh, that performance he had tonight was just amazing to see, and he winds up with a no decision. That's the Phil's record in extra innings. Phillies are seven and eight in extra inning ball games. The Marlins, meanwhile, in extra inning games this year, they've had a lot of one run games, the Marlins, and they've lost a lot. Well, they beat the Phillies in a long extra inning game in that heat of Miami, Florida, the last game of the series down there. Ryan Howard checks it to the ball game for the Phillies, so Howard is in there for Globe. So he'll bat in the pitcher spot. Schwimmer, meanwhile, will bat in Ross Glode's spot. Seventh ball game for Schwimmer. A 3.68 earned run average. And it's two balls and no strikes to Donnie Murphy. Try to get this game to the bottom of the tenth and keep it at a 1 1 ball game. Give the Phil's a chance to win it. Cliff Lee now has 223 strikeouts. So just an amazing performance tonight. You know, we talked about it you know, an inning or two ago, just kidding about it, but this, the one run. You yeah. Know, you know, it's hard to win a game one to nothing. Phillies are trying to do it for the second time in three days. Right. And, and to or two pit, days. Pit, right, have a guy pitch a complete game one nothing shutout. Just so hard to do. And, you know. They weren't able to score more than one run, and it wound up biting them there at the end. Pete Orr talking to Cliff Lee, just patted him on the back as he walked away. What do you say? You know, he's second guessing himself a little bit for the pitch he threw, but he also had to think, I don't know, the guy's not going to hit it out of the ballpark tonight. That's not going to happen. Well, Greg Dobbs is going to pinch hit for Matt Dominguez. Jack McKeon brought Greg Dobbs into his office the other day and said, hey, listen, you're going to play in the final few weeks of the season, but we're going to give Matt Dominguez a chance to play because we got to see what he has. Greg Dobbs said he was fine with that. Jack McKean did say that he wants Greg Dobbs back next year for the Marlins because he served such a good per great purpose for them at a depth of third at first and as the Philly fans know aside from last year he was a heck of a pinch hitter for them. Two and the count. Badenhop is warming in the pen for the Marlins. Upstairs, three and one. They've gone to the ninth inning up at Coca Cola. Oh, yeah, Coca Cola Park, excuse me. Columbus leads Lehigh Valley 3 to 2. Shallow right center field, at least there. I thought you were talking about some place in Hawaii for a <laughs> second. I was. Uh, Coca Cola Hola Hola. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing some kind of hula hula. That's what it sounded like. I wonder, where, I wonder where this game is being played. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Meanwhile, looks like the Rangers are going to cut their magic number to 10 to win the American League West. They lead it 6 nothing over Cleveland. That game's in the fifth. Logan Morris to take strike one from Schwimmer here in the top of the 10.
You know, the other thing too about that last uh, potential last out before Lopez hit the home run. Yesterday's game was two hours six minutes. That's a fast game. Well, Lee was. Uh, he he was. He was either going to be right on that or he was going to top it by a minute. Yeah. Which would have been sweet for everybody after this long day that. You know that looked like it was going to end with that, but it isn't. You're in the tenth inning. You try and win it now and win it that way. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Rays. 9 1 over Boston. Better than being a Red Sox. The way things are going for them right now. Oh, wow. 1 2 the count to Morrison. And he stays alive. The Phillies with this great pitching just have to score. And they're capable of scoring, but right now they're in one of those things again. And, you know, it basically cost them this game by having one run on the board. Martinez, Howard, and Rollins to lead off in the bottom of the tenth. And a call, strike three. Schwimmer does his job. Two strikeouts here in the tenth inning. He retires the Marlins in order. So we go to the bottom of the tenth. It's a 1 1 game. And the Phils will look to win it. Get all the highlights and a complete recap of this matchup immediately after the game. Stay tuned for the expert analysis of Ricky Metallico at Phillies Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance, right here immediately after the game. Well, not a full moon. And again, not many things have happened tonight that would lead you to believe it was a full moon, except for maybe Jose Lopez's home run with two outs and two strikes at the top of the ninth. Go to the bottom of the tenth inning. It's a 1-1 game. Greg Dobbs stays in the ball game to play third. And Burke Badenhop is the new pitcher for the Marlins. 48th ball game for Badenhop. Two and one, a 3.86 earned run average. And he will face Michael Martinez to start the bottom of the tenth. It's Martinez, Howard, and then Rollins. Martinez thought about a bunt. He brought Dobbs in with that. And it's one ball and no strikes. Two and zero. Peyton Hop is a sinker slider pitcher. And lives with his sinker for the most part. Well, the guy on deck's not going to bunt him over. I don't think that's going to happen. No. So Michael Martinez, they want to get him on and then go to swing it. Ball four. He just walked him on four pitches. July of 2010, Phillies had that big weekend against the Cincinnati Reds. Arthur Rhodes 
That's his former teammate Ryan Howard, a walk-off bomb right there. Gave the Phillies a big win as they uh, went in the All-Star break that year with a lot of momentum and a four-game sweep against the Reds. Well, Ryan is old for his last 15, so to say he's due is an understatement. Now, if he were to bunt right now, he'd probably get a hit. But I probably caused this entire crowd to faint too. Well, I just, you know, I mean, they made this double switch and all, but they didn't have him up here to bunt the time of the winning run over. I don't think. But you never know. Nope, not. Baynard hey, keeps throwing that sinker down and away. That was a really a bit of bat by Michael Martinez. You know, don't take that for granted what he just did. You know, he made him throw him a strike and he never did. There he is, three for six off Baynard, including a homer and a double. Either or would be just fine. Come Randy St. Clair to have a conversation with him, the pitching coach. An awfully slow walk. There is somebody loosening up in the pen for the Marlins. Yeah, well, that's why it's a slow walk. Looks like it's Clay Hensley. They don't like what they saw right away from Baden. It is Hensley. He get ready fast. Dunn pitched in the first game of the day night doubleheader. The lefty for the Marlins. And the only lefty. Yep. He started to loosen his arm up before, but he's uh, the one with the jacket on. Right behind the mounds in that bullpen or to the side of the mound. What to know the count to Howard. Five straight out of the strike zone by Baden Hop. They get six straight. What do you do? Does Ryan Howard stand there until he throws a strike? Or does he think right now it's two and oh he's gonna throw something I can hammer? I think I'd take. All right. <laughs> now what do you do? <laughs> well, if you took 2 0, thinking you're going to take a strike, probably going to take 3 0. No? I don't know. I, you know, it's, a, I don't know. He'll give him the green light. Oh sure, he's allowed to swing. You know they didn't give him a take. It's up to Howard. He was taken all the way, three and one. Yep. He decided to take all the way. I, seven in a row out of the strike zone. At least I don't think they gave him a take, but you know, just right, seven in a row out of the strike zone. Your take. Toward the alley in left center field. Bonifacio got a late start. It's going to the wall. Martinez is around third. Heading for home. The throw by Murphy and the Phillies win it. The magic number is down to two. On opposite field. Game winning. Double for Ryan Howard. It's a 2-1 victory. And they are lobbing Ryan Howard and rightfully so. Nice way to break it over. That's a nice way to break it over. Over for his last 15. And he just delivered one right through the wind in left center field. Oh, he crushed that thing. That, that's a home run ball a lot of nights here. And just smoked it. Ryan Howard had a tremendous at bat there too. He took the 3-0 and then he got the 3-1 and just hammered. Of course, he is our Chevrolet player of the game with a Little nod to Cliff Lee, too. Little nod to Cliff Lee. 12 strikeouts in nine innings and no decision for Cliff. The Phillies win it two to one in the bottom of the 10th inning as the big piece comes through. Here it is. It's a sinker, it looked like. And he crushes it. Look at the flag. That was a great shot we had there of those flags blowing in, trying to knock that ball down. And it still went all the way to the wall. Martinez is a plus runner. Scores easily on that. Not that it would have mattered because Samwell was waving them all the way, but Bonifacio got a terrible jump after that ball of the alley. And it was left for the center fielder Brian Peterson, and he couldn't get there in time. And Michael Martinez scored the game winner. And Sarge is down on the field with Cliff Lee. Sarge, take it away. Hey guys, thanks a lot.
Well, most important thing is to win the ball game, but I got to tell you, game on. One heck of a game, one bad pitch. Yeah, it was 0-2, uh, oh, the bottom of the night, two outs. I mean, <laughs> I can't think of a worse scenario right there. I mean, it was, it was a bad pitch, bottom line. You know, you got to give, give, him, give him credit right there for uh, putting a good swing on it. I tried to throw a backdoor cutter and left it up out over the plate and he hit a homer. So uh, that was big by Howie right there in the 10th to, to get us to win. Uh, that's the most important thing. And uh, on to tomorrow. Well, true professional. The team continues to play good defense. Clutch hits there by Ryan Howard the gap. Martinez scoring. That's really what it's all about. No doubt. That was clutch for Howie right there. And, you know, Raul making that catch there in the ninth was big, too. You know, if he doesn't make that catch, the game's over. So, uh, you know, he gets a lot of credit for that, that play right there. But, uh, yeah, we won. That's the bottom line. Well, next time it'll be a better outcome for you. Main thing, the fighting fields won. Continued success. Thanks for coming on, Cliff. Thanks for having me. All right, Tom Wills. Yep, that's it. Simply winning. That's what the Phillies are doing, even though Cliff Lee received a no decision. Ryan Howard in the bottom of the 10th inning won it for the Phillies. 97 victories for the Phillies. And this crowd, they knew they had a chance to see a game winner. Once that ball went through the gap, Ryan was yelling as soon as he went around the first base back. We'll be back right after this.